I'm Bradley Hearn, an agricultural business consultant for Brown & Co, based in our Kingsland office. Today we're in North Cambridgeshire and I'm joined by my colleagues Andrew Kitchen, an agricultural business consultant based in our Barrister Evans office, and Thomas Burks, a partner in our land agency division based in our Banbury office. Following the UK's decision to leave the EU, there are a number of policy changes that are being implemented over the course of the transition period. This transition period is timelined to last for seven years. Today we're going to talk about the changes in policy and in particular the lump sum exit payment, the delinking of payments and what farmers need to consider regarding this. Andrew, please can you remind us how the basic payment scheme is going to change and how the payment structure is going to alter over the course of the transition period? Yeah, so over the next seven years, the basic payment scheme uh, is going to reduce uh, to a zero payment by 2028. The 2021 year will be the first year that farmers will see a reduction in their basic payment scheme um, payment. Uh, and then with a reference period of the 2020 payment, this will reduce year on year uh, until 2027 where the last payment is made. It's my understanding that there will be a 50% reduction in the basic payment scheme payment by 2024. Yes, that's correct. Um, so based on a thousand acre farmer, their payment on the reference period, the year of 2020, would have been £93,000. That will go down to £39,000 by 2024. Thank you, Andrew. Tom, bearing in mind what Andrew's just said, are you seeing any impact with rents at the moment? We're not seeing any uh, reduction in rents at all at the moment, uh, and tendered rents are still very strong. Great, thank you very much. Should you take a walk? With the reduction in basic payment scheme income, this is obviously going to have an impact on businesses' profitability and cash flow. Are the government providing any support to farmers and businesses to help them manage their way through the transition period? Yes, so with the progress progressive cuts that are happening on the basic payment scheme, they're taking this money and reinvesting it into other schemes and grants, such as the Environment Land Management Scheme, and grants such as the Farm Transformation Fund, which just opened, and the Farm Equipment and Technology Fund. In addition to that, they're also providing money uh, as part of the Future Farm Resilience Fund, which Brown & Co are the largest deliverer of. We're delivering 750 on-farm meetings and reports, uh, and that is to look at how businesses can adapt when they should adapt in order to help them through this transition period. And what sort of detail are you including in this report? Yes, yeah, so we look through uh, three years of financial accounts and uh, we then do a, like an accounts analysis, so a percentage change, and also show these accounts against some key performance indicators to, to see how they compare to similar businesses in the market. We also identify any value creation opportunities and signpost them to other professionals that they can get further help through through this period. Sounds like a good scheme. Um, Tom, can you just explain to us what the outcomes are from these meetings and the discussions you're having with farmers? Yeah, so obviously farmers are looking to replace this income uh, and, and, and find ways of, of replacing that income through diversification projects. Uh, so we are talking to clients about um, on-farm renewable uh, and uh, projects uh, to include kind of residential development, other projects where their income can be increased through their assets. Brilliant, thank you. So Andrew, as part of the transition period and the changes in agricultural policy, I've seen a lot in the press about uh, taking lump sum payments. Can you explain a little bit more about how this works? Yeah, so the lump sum payment scheme uh, is currently under consultation, uh, so the exact detail on it could change. But basically what DEFRA are doing are offering farmers the opportunity to take a one-off payment in order to surrender their entitlements, and this should be available from the 2022 year. Uh, it will mean that they will not be able to access any direct payments uh, throughout the transition period and will just take it as a lump sum to anyone that's eligible. Great. And Tom, uh, what could this mean for farmers then? Well, it's proposed that land uh, owner occupiers, uh, they would have to either gift the land, sell the land, or if they wish, they can let the land, but the, if they're going to let it, it has to be on a minimum of a five year period. Or if the claimant is a tenant, uh, then they have to end the tenancies they are tenant of. Great. Okay, so uh, for tenants then, how 
how would they go about ending that tenancy? Can you explain how they'd go through that process? Yeah, so the, there's, there's obviously two types of tenancies, mainly agriculture, there's the farm business tenancy or there's the Agriculture Holdings Act tenancy. Both of them on standard terms require a 12 month notice to quit. Um, however, it may not always be the best thing to do serving straight serving a notice um, and obviously these tenancies don't just come to an end automatically these notices need to be served uh, but it may be better to do a surrender agreement with your landlord uh, because if the tenancy has been in place for a long time then there could be a counterclaim from the landlord for dilapidations in the situation of an agricultural holdings act tenancy the uh, the, the presence of that tenancy on land uh, brings down the capital value of that, of that land. So there may be the opportunity to do a surrender agreement with a surrender payment from the landlord to the tenant. The basis of that agreement is obviously purely between negotiation between the parties and will be affected by the age of the tenant, the tax position of the landlord and the and any dilapidations that need to be accounted for. Great, thank you very much. Andrew, please can you explain how the lump sum is calculated? Yeah, so what DEFRA are proposing in the moment is that they are going to use a reference period to calculate your lump sum payment. That is proposed at the minute to be the 2018, the 2019, the 2020 payment years. And what DEFRA will do with this, they will take the reference amount and take an average across those three years and times it by 2.35 and that would be the lump sum payment that they would consider paying you, up to a total value of 100,000. In terms of that would be what the cap would be, and what that means is that farmers up to 182 hectares or less would not come into that cap. Okay, great, thanks. Tom, please can you inform us what owner-occupiers need to consider when they're selling their land? So yeah, so preparation is key in this instance. We want to sell the property to the right, the right people in the right way. The, the timing of making sure when buyers are active in the market or whether it's getting the right photos at the right time of year or on a practical level of simply removing crops uh, and animals from the land. The strategy for the agent, us as agents, to sell land, uh, we want to sell the right product to the right person and therefore that will affect the way we market it. So if it's a strategic located farm, we would look to try and market that to maybe an investor, uh, whereas if it's a more commercial farm, we, we would look to market that to more of a farmer, uh, a buyer. So, so making sure we, we've got that prepped uh, and ready to go is the best way to maximise that value. The tax implications, uh, the, the preparation may be required to change the structure of the ownership maybe, uh, to, take, to take best advantage of the tax system. Um, and then obviously with machinery sales, uh, making sure that machinery is used and available for sale it is a very imperative. Also, there is some tax implications that need to be required. So the timing of selling machinery and selling the land for the cessation of that business is quite important too. Great, thanks Tom. So Andrew, Tom's just discussed uh, owner occupiers disposing of land. With land, uh, entitlements are tied to this. Can you just explain to us what the future of entitlements is? So. As part of this lump sum exit scheme, uh, entitlements, all of their English entitlements would simply be cancelled uh, and farmers would have to completely give them up. And also farmers wouldn't be able to take a partial claim, they wouldn't be able to take a partial exit, they would need to take a full exit and all of their entitlements would be surrendered. Great, thank you. Thank you guys. Andrew, DEFRA intends to de-link payment, direct payments from 2024. What does this mean for farming businesses? So what the de-linking means is that farmers will still continue to get their basic payment from 2024. And that would be irrespective of the fact uh, if they are farming the land or even if any of the land is held at all. That will still be based on the 2020 reference period. But they must have still been farming uh, before 2024. Great. Thank you. And Tom, uh, can you just highlight what this means for new entrants? Yeah, so new entrants or people that are uh, expanding their holding after 2024 will not be able to claim on that new land. So there may be a slight imbalance in the market during that period. However, this will rebalance out when we get to 2028 when no one will be receiving any payments. So that, that will balance that element of, of, of the market. Great. 
Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Tom. So that concludes today's uh, video. Quite interesting topics there we've discussed uh, with all the policy change that's coming through. Um, there's going to be quite a lot of impact on the industry and across all sectors, uh, whether that be landlords, tenants or owner occupiers. Um, there's going to be a lot of challenges out there, but we feel there's going to be quite a lot of opportunities that, that come with those challenges for the bright farming businesses. Um, so that concludes episode four of our Brown & Co videos. Um, please uh, go, go to our website where you'll find contact details for our local offices. And if you've got any questions, please not, do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much for watching.